So again, living with you, the next bit of material, I mean, it will take five or 10 minutes and then we'll never use it in this class, but it's one of those really famous things where you never feel quite right, just, uh, just waving it away entirely. And that's matrix exponentiation. So suppose we don't have matrices and suppose we don't have vectors. Suppose we just have a variable X whose derivative is A times X. Then the solution to this differential equation is X equals A, E, sorry, times A to the power of T. What if we have the derivative of a matrix equals A times X? And again, one reason of several that we're not actually going to use matrix exponentiation in this class is that we already know how to solve this. We go from here down to here, we know how to solve this. And once we found the linear, in, linear the independent solutions to this bottom equation, we've also solved the top equation. So in one sense, there is no need to say anything further about this. But it's maybe interesting to ask, at least as an intellectual exercise, um, whether we can think of X as equaling E to the AT, just as we did on the first slide. And I mean, the issue we run into here is that we don't know what it means to take a number, in this case, E, and put a matrix, A, T, into its exponent. I don't think. Actually, now I'm super curious and I have to know if we've got a matrix A, I kind of doubt our calculator is going to be able to do this, but let's find out. E to the power of this matrix, it does not like that as I kind of suspected. Nevertheless, there is a way to define this exponentiation such that it, such that this works out such that X is equal to E times the A T. And the difficulty from a practical point of view is that this definition is an infinite process. Um, and this is coming right from a count of this. Uh, I mentioned 
I made an offhand reference to Taylor series earlier in the class. The Taylor series is the idea of taking a function and writing it essentially as an infinite polynomial. And there are complications. Maybe the infinite polynomial doesn't converge everywhere or, or all sorts of things. We did that back in college to this, but exponentials, the exponential is really nice. I mean, in the sense that e to the x does equal its Taylor series across the entire real number line. So uh, that's here's e to the x one plus x does not initially look a whole lot like e to the x, but I'm even if we add just a second term, just a quadratic term, if we zoom in and look at this part of the graph, now these things do look similar. And if we keep adding x cubed over three factorial, it never happens quite as quickly. Well, there. I mean, up in this positive region, these curves really do look very similar. You have to really kind of scroll up a long way before they start to move apart visibly. And if we added another term, another few terms, they then get closer together. So it's sort of taking its sweet time in the negative direction. But if instead of having these eight terms, I guess nine terms with the one, if we could have infinitely many terms, the graphs would be identical. And that's the idea of the Taylor series, that, um, that a lot of functions can be thought of as infinite polynomials. And since we can multiply square matrices together, and we can do um, taking taking a matrix divided by a number is just scaled or multiplication. That's nothing special, it's super easy. So we can um, take square matrices and we can raise them to powers and we can take square matrices and divide them by numbers. We can't add one to square matrices, but we have a matrix that acts like one, the identity matrix. We define matrix exponentiation using the Taylor series.
and I'm not going to try to prove it, but um, the series always converges. What I mean by that is that it doesn't matter what the matrix A is, as long as A is a square matrix, E to the A is defined. And this definition works in the sense that if we define matrix exponentiation in this way, then we can remove that question mark and say that if x prime equals a x, x does indeed equal e to the a t. And that concludes matrix exponentiation and also this section and this lecture. Does anybody have any questions? Then at some point, we're going to have to have a test. I mean, I guess we usually. I think we usually just have true midterms and a final. So if that's correct, it shouldn't be happening right away. It should be happening about two thirds of the way through the, uh, through the semester. But I'll take a look at the material and I'll get that. I mean, there's probably some tentative date already in Canvas, but I'll make a definitive decision sometime soon.